So, Jeremy, how short are you? I am uh, 6'3". Nice. Yeah. I remember uh, seventh grade when I was that <laughs> short. <laughs> uh, so, how tall are you? 6'11". 6'11". So, I'll challenge you to horse. And when is the next time you're in Chicago? It's... Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have big Jason Henderson. He's already given me a hard time on how short I am. He's one of the most experienced email marketers online today. He's written the emails and come up with all of the email marketing strategy behind some of the biggest product launches in internet history like Main Street Marketing Machines Fusion for Mike Koenigs and Traffic Geyser. He has John Carlton and the CEO of Revolution Golf and many more people singing his praises, which I will ask about. And he created the course Email Response Warrior. And I love the first sentence, Jason, of this, uh, of the email page. People have to check it out just for the copy and for the design images. Uh, if you want to know how to easily and instantly increase the response to every single email you send, regardless of the niche, then this is the most valuable course you've ever seen. Jason, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jeremy. It's an honor to be here. So, Jason, since this is Inspired Insider, tell me about your lowest moment and then how you push forward through it. Lowest moment. Um, so in 2009, when I did that uh, big product launch, it was actually a relaunch of one of the biggest product launches in internet history at that time. I think they did like $8 million. And um, it was a very polarizing product. It was CPA marketing, and there was huge claims. Uh, it was very biz -oppy. And I spent 75% of my time actually rebuilding relationships because – not only did they not mail the 60K list for a year, but after the launch, they didn't mail the affiliates. No thank yous, no reciprocal mailings, nothing. Hmm. Just dead silent. And um, the new product, uh, the opt-in pages were, had uh, cocaine and prostitutes. <laughs> really? It was, yeah. <laughs> it was way out there. Uh, it, it was, you know, it had a hook, but it was very controversial. And then the new, there was, it was going to be a new product, um, but it was kind of intangible. It was kind of hard to pin down what it actually was. And we ended up losing money. Hmm. So it's probably the first launch in internet marketing history where it was a successful launch, relaunched it, and you, we lost money. And I got, kind of the blame for the affiliates not promoting. And uh, I was kind of pissed off. I was like, dude, I did my best. You know, I got them to open up all the emails. They're clicking. I was at this conference and someone said, you know, hey, you're doing really good things um, with the, the emails for this launch. And I said, yeah. I was like, did you see the one with the bunny rabbit? And he's like, no, but I heard about it. Um, so I was, people were taking notice and everything, but it just didn't do well. And so I kind of got blamed. So I was kind of pissed off that I was taking the blame for this. And I assumed that people outside the launch would take notice of it. So I'm like, oh, I'm screwed. I was going to go back to into my own little thing and try to make that work. And not, I'm not going to have a lot of clients because they think I suck now. And that exact opposite happened. People hmm. started emailing me out of the woodwork saying, hey, Jason, I love what you did with that launch. He's like, can you do it for me? And then John Carlton's business partner was contacting me, wanted me to work for them. And Stompernet wanted me to work for them. And uh, so I was at a really low point. But then I kind of realized that, you know, hey, if you do your best, you put yourself in the best possible position to succeed, then, you know, it's going to be okay no, no matter what people do. Um, and similar to that, I worked for a pretty big name in internet marketing, and it went terrible. And what he communicated, I did not – I obviously didn't understand, and he was pissed off, and I had already done a lot of work, and there was hard feelings. Um, and then he started telling people. Mm. So that was – That was really uh, hard. Yeah, it was really hard. But then – 
you know, as you are mentioning, I have a lot of testimonials and uh, I had worked with Mike Dillard and Robert Hirsch, did their launch and uh, Mind Valley actually heard the horrible thing from the guy that was bad mouthing me. And they actually contacted uh, Mike Dillard, Robert Hirsch, and they actually told them the exact opposite. Mm. So that's why they decided to work with me. Wow. Uh, is because they are times more successful than the guy bad mouthing me, uh, but they told him the exact opposite. Yeah, so how do you, you know, because that happens online, and how do you internalize that? Because that's one of the toughest things, your reputation. Right. So how do you, what do you do when that's happening? Uh, you know, you just focus on what you can control, and you do your best. And, uh, you know, you, you don't sweat the small stuff. You just push forward and, um, you know, just concentrate on, uh, you know, the good things. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is tough. So on the flip side, Jason, what's one of the proudest moments? Proudest moments. Um... Hmm. I should put this in my notes. Sorry to make you edit this. No, I'm not. I don't do any editing. I'm like uh, that golfer. Who's the uh, Martin? Yeah, the go- Martin? Yeah. Yeah. The golf I'm, I'm like Martin. We just, whatever. Oops. Yeah. Someone's, I've had a uh, you know, cat jumping on the keyboard, people walking in, trains. It's fine. All right. Um, it's probably a toss up with the, the Martin Chuck launch and how it, it crushed the, um, the Gary player launch because it had such low expectations. Uh, even Martin had low expectations and, uh, you know, I got, to, on the next launch, I got to meet him in person and speak to him live and just, you know, what he was telling me. And then you see in the testimonies from that he's given me. Um, so that made me feel feel really good that I was able to do that in a in a niche that I I hated actually. Why I grew to love it because I just thought golf was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I never golfed. Um, I had ridden a golf cart. Golf carts are cool. I actually got in trouble when I was in college. The first school I went to was Sacramento State University, and um, they asked us to help out in the administration of a celebrity golf tournament for the Sacramento Kings and um, me and a couple guys on the team got in trouble because we were racing the golf carts <laughs> which I still remember I had a blast uh, but I didn't like watching it I had no inclination to try it and um, yeah just through my research and the skills that I um, existing skills that I had uh, I was able to do really well and especially uh, beat the launch with the number, you know, top five player in the world. Hmm. I actually still have not taken any lessons. I wanted to, um, but I haven't done that. But I actually enjoy watching it now. So your wife can beat you? She showed me a few things, and she just like, I'm so glad you're a writer, honey. <laughs> <laughs>